Good day, welcome. This is your daily med with Lady V. Grace and peace be multiplied. As we continue to look at the characteristics of sheep in the Bible. Yesterday we talked about two things about uh, the sheep and especially that they are a source of income. We also said that they were one of the first set of animals to be domesticated. We also say that they were used as a sacrifice and human beings, they refer or sim they are symbolic of human beings. We know that God first compared the Israelites to sheep. We also know that it is said that the, uh, um, sheep is notorious for following meaning if somebody is leading them, they will faithfully follow. Even though there are times when the sheep is prone to wander, when the sheep is prone to go astray from the fold. And we'll find that in St. Luke 15, verse 2 through verse 17. The sheep sometimes is prone to wander. But today we want to look at a third reason human beings are compared to sheep in the Bible. Is that sheep, as we say, they are prone to wander from the flock. Isaiah 53 and verse 6. A sheep's only chance of survival is with the flock under the care of a competent shepherd sheep sometimes become overconfident therefore they become rebellious they get distracted and they wander away no wonder we are lightened as sheep many times we tend to wander from the fold sometimes we not only tend to wander but we do wander from the fall of God and he lovingly will pull us back or call us back by sometimes hard means just to bring us back to the fall. So a sheep as we say they will say I look over here and I see greener pastures it looks good and then sets out on a journey and begin to wander going in a direction that they fail to notice that they are going away from the shepherd and they are going away from the fowl. Peter had this tendency in mind when he warned the church to be on the alert because the devil prowls around like a roaring lion seeking those whom he may devour. First Peter 5 and verse 8. When you notice a flock of any kind of animal or a herd of sheep and they are going together. The moment one becomes either sick or tired or weary or wayward, whatever the case may be, you will see wild animals, especially the lion, lurking around. What is he waiting for? What is he doing? He is waiting for such one, as in this lesson it would be sheep, to separate themselves from the flock, either to log a little behind and the flock is gone ahead and then uh, he logs again and he sees something and he picks at it and the, the lion is watching. What is he doing? It waits until a solitary lamb wandered too far or stayed far too behind from the shepherd. And guess what? The lion will make his attack. That sheep would become is pray. We see one of Jesus' most famous parable is about a lamb that strayed so far because it was lost. And Jesus, the good shepherd, 
left the 99 sheep in the fold and went to search for the one lamb who had gone astray. St. Luke 15, verse 2 through verse 17. Sheep were the first creatures, sorry, sheep, of course, were the first creatures along with their shepherd to witness a sky filled with angels as their shepherds heard the good news of the birth of Jesus Christ. St. Luke 2, verse 8 through 15. God would have sent the news of his newborn son, his king, into the earth. He first gave the news to the shepherds. It did not go to the temple. It did not go to the palace. Instead, he announced the arrival of the lamb to a field filled with sheep and dear shepherds. So we can say from the foundation of time, God has this great plan in mind. He has a purpose when he sent his son and lighten him to a good shepherd, lighten him to the chief shepherd, the eternal shepherd, the one who will shepherd his people. As we see, Jesus is often compared to a lamb because he was meek, he was humble, he was non-threatening. St. John 1 verse 29 and verse 36, Isaiah um, 53 and verse 7. Even in heaven, when the day of the Lord arrives, Jesus is still called the Lamb in the book of Revelation. Revelation 5 verse 12 and Revelation 13 and verse 8. But in the ironic twist, the one called the Lamb pours out its wrath like a lion to all those who continue to oppose him. Revelation 6 and verse 16, Revelation 14, 9 through 11. So today we may see him as it was when he came in his first advent as a humble lamb. But a day is coming when he will come back, when he will come back as the mighty conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. When he comes, he will be the judge. We also see sheep are significant throughout the Bible. And we can learn a lot about God and his dealings with humanity by understanding um, the nature of a sheep. What can we learn? We learn about ourselves. We learn that we are helpless without God and can do nothing. We are reminded of sin shocking consequences because every sin that we do every time we wonder we have to pay for our consequences. So we know that if we wander from him, we can come confessing our sins. He's faithful and he's just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if we are the one who wandered, if we have gone astray, if we have left the shepherd's fold, today I can tell you that the shepherd is in search of you. He gathers the lambs into his arms and carry them close to his heart. He gently leads those that are young. Isaiah 40 and verse 11. When we study the ways of sheep, how they are used, they can be teaching tools to us when we look at them in the Bible. It helps us to better understand ourselves in relation to our good shepherd. Remember, Jesus Christ came as the good shepherd and he gave his life for the sheep. So when the sheep understand the life of the shepherd, 
is she as God's children we are better able to understand ourselves God bless you thank you again for watching please subscribe please hit the like button and please continue to visit my youtube channel daily med with lady v